That which you can practice, this which is not abstract, which is concrete, is this practice. And by this practice you can have complete control over your pause. Pause means you exhale. And you want to inhale. But between inhalation and exhalation, there is a pause. That pause is killer. Suppose one he exhales and never inhales, he is dead. That pause is killer. That pause is called death. Yogis control that pause. All the exercises are meant to have control over that. Though all the exercises in the beginning are meant to control the motion of lungs, to regulate the motion of lungs, but that's not all. Finally, all the breathing exercises, pranayama exercises, are meant to have perfect control over the pause. Now I go beyond. After you have understood your antahakarana, you go and try to understand the finer body within you, finest body within you. According to Munda Kupanishad, what you call prana is not prana. They are not called prana. They are called vehicle. Vehicle, yes. which is, take prana inside. Prana, pana, vyana, udana, samana, this way. Then there are many, many vehicles. They do their work separately. What is prana? The first unit of life is called prana, and now this is body, breath, mind, conscious mind, and conscious mind, and here is the center of consciousness from where all power comes. So first unit is called prana. Prana is not here actually, it's here. Only one scripture, there are many other scriptures, but one Upanishad explains it, that's called Mundak Upanishad. We have taught that. Because of prana, the mind moves, mind functions. Who motivates mind to function? It's prana. The Munda Kupanishad talks about this prana. This adi prana, this adi prana. This adi prana, this shakti, devatma shakti, as with Upanishad says, is called Kundalini. Kundalini Shakti. At present it is in a latent state. You do not know. You think it is prana. It is called prana, actual prana is this. Prana means very life, the source of life, the source of whole creation. So we, you are going beyond after analyzing, understanding all different functions of your mind. Manash, Chitta, Buddhi and Ahankara. You can have a dialogue, a free dialogue with yourself by understanding, is it my mind that is dictating the terms to me, that is confusing. Whenever you are confused, sit down. You are confused because you have not taken decision. You have not asked your Buddhi. That's why you confuse. Mind will confuse, mind will give you many suggestions. Which way shall I go? This way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Unless mind takes help from buddhi, it will be always confused. So you are confused because your buddhi is not functioning well. Remember this. Anybody who says, I am confused, you are not using your buddhi. How two and two will make four? How two and two will make... If you don't use your buddhi, will go on remembering this. Confusion lies because you are not taking help from your buddhi. Dialogue means trying to be aware. Well, this mind, this manas is confusing me. Why should I not take help from my buddhi? What is my ego? Ego helps in the external world. We can polish, purify that ego and use it 
for right purpose. So you think ego is that faculty which is always bad? No. Bad ego is bad. So when you understand four aspects separately and enter into dialogue, that dialogue will help you sometimes to go beyond. What is beyond this? All this wheel, what is inside this, beyond this wheel? You have to face a train of thoughts mixed with emotions. And then a process you have to start which is called introspection. Inspecting within is called introspection. Because by that time you have learned how not to identify yourself with the thought patterns. Suddenly you remember your childhood, something you did in your childhood you liked that time. Now you are adult, you don't like it. And during meditation, when mind is calm, conscious mind, do you know what becomes active? Unconscious becomes active. So you say, what is all this? Swamiji taught me meditation, I am trying to calm down, my mind has become very active. This method is not good. When you catch hold of the small part of mind, which is called conscious mind, like a finger, catch hold of it tightly, my whole body will become activated to protect it. So is the case with the students. So this, therefore, there is a word called patience. Learn to be patient with yourself. Learn to expand your capacity. Now persist. Don't give up. Train yourself. Training is great. I will tell you one example of training. There is a party in the army camp. And the commander ordered a captain to bring some dishes from the market. And he brought. On the way somebody, a practical joker, appeared and said, Attention! He forgot that he was holding something. He came to attention. Everything broke. He came running to his commander. He said, Sir, I have committed a mistake. What happened? You are such a capable officer. Why did you do such a thing? Sir, that's a mistake. So what happened, tell me. He said, I was coming. All right. But on the way, practical joker appeared and said, Attention. And I have... Whenever I heard attention, I used to be attention. Training is such a powerful thing. If you have trained yourself, whenever that method of training is visualized by you or you hear, everything is dropped. No matter how strong habit pattern you have. So with the help of training, you can change the groups of your mind, help yourself. Never Give up, say, you cannot train yourself, don't give up this. Remember, you will be rewarded from inside. Gradually you can train yourself. Now, I was talking to you about the pranic force, about the Mother Divine in you who has created this structure, who has given you beauty, who has given you all that you have. That mother is there in you. you see. That's a direct Shakti. Sun, without its light, is not sun. As sun is different from the light, but sun cannot exist without light, Therefore, the Atman cannot exist without Atma Shakti. 